So I think I think you're going to get in this very serious pickle for this economy. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of fear coming in later in the year and into 2024, yeah. at least in Bitcoin and, and the stock market. The next few months, I do think a retest of the October lows. And I do mm -hmm. think that ultimately it becomes a very bearish scenario for the overall equity markets and really, to be honest, all risk assets. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. As we enter a new month, it's time to take a look at the markets and evaluate where we stand in the first quarter of 2023, and what to expect in the coming months leading up to summer. In today's video, we have ProTrader Gareth Soloway to help us navigate these uncharted waters. At the time of writing, Bitcoin is trading at $23,683, up 2.37% today, while Ethereum is changing hands for $1,653, up 2.98% from yesterday. Both assets have been consolidating within a small upward sloping channel, but Gareth has been adamant in his position that markets still have more downside to go, especially when we look at the stock market. On Twitter, Gareth recently shared a chart of the S&P 500, indicating a potential for major downside over the next 12 months. In a recent interview with the Paul Barron Network, Gareth discussed the macro outlook for markets going into the early summer months. He also examined the overall sentiment in the market, as a new class of investors is emerging, which appears to be good news for the crypto space. As usual, he examined the charts to identify potential trading opportunities for Bitcoin and Ethereum over the next few days, so you need to act quickly. Let's listen to Gareth as he gives us his March crypto outlook and his view of where we stand in the four-year cycle. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel, as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. I think through the early summer months, my guess is we will retest those October lows. But I think again, you know, the the recession that everyone's talking about will eventually hit. But my guess is likely in the second half. So kind of late summer, fall, maybe into the into the kind of November, December period. And so I think that the markets are going to be kind of on the on the kind of the cusp of wondering what's the Fed going to do, right? Because the right. positive of a recession is the Fed stops hiking and maybe cuts, but the negative of a recession is lower earn for stocks and and maybe a troublesome um, recession that we can't get out of very easily unless the Fed comes to the rescue. So it's going to be one of those guessing games, I think, over the next, you know, three to four months. And then I do mm -hmm. think that ultimately it becomes a very bearish scenario for the overall equity markets and really, to be honest, all risk assets. I think we're seeing more and more signals of this where, you know, you're getting certain data points like like jobs to stay strong, but then you have other job, other kind of um, economic data points that are becoming very, very weak. And I think ultimately the jobs will weaken, but it's keeping the Fed tighter for longer. And that's actually going to be very problematic over the next 12 to 18 months. So I think I think you're going to get in this very serious pickle for this economy. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of fear coming in later in the year and into 2024. Yeah. So I do think that we're going to see some downside in Bitcoin here, and we've already seen a little bit of a pullback off the 20, uh, 25,000 marker. But let's take a look at the chart and see what we have in store here. So if we look at the chart of Bitcoin, we can see that the recent highs mirror the high pivot from the August period, right? So it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. why that was going to be a pivot resistance point. And so what we can do is we can basically take a trend line, put it right at that high, and it's the highest point going back to when we made the uh, the cycle lows on Bitcoin here. And that's where we stopped out. Now, what we're seeing here is actually a little bit of a channel being developed. And again, channels are really handy for kind of giving us highs and lows. So what we can do is we can connect these lows here and we drag that trend line up. And then we notice that that matches the highs on Bitcoin yeah. as well from here to right here. So so what this tells me is that you have a lot of resistance around 25,000, 25,300, but then your technical support is around 22,300. So my mm -hmm. guess is we'll retest 22,300. The big question then becomes, do we break that level? I am in the camp that eventually we do break that level and we trade back to about the 18,000 um, 400 level, which was the midpoint here of this kind of W pattern bottom. So again, I, I yep. am in the camp that we will see some trouble for the economy here over the next, um, you know, the next, at least in Bitcoin and, and the stock market, the next few months, I do think a retest of the October lows, which then brings Bitcoin back to about 18,400. That you're getting this consolidation in the charts and that does seem to be a pivot point and the reason it's a pivot point is that if we look at the daily chart and i can throw my chart up again here to take a look yep. is we clearly see that this area here that first kind of little topping area that's right at 23.8 
And so the idea here is that if you can recapture that high, it starts to tip the scales towards the more bullish side. Now, again, if we put that trend line in here, right at 23.8, you can see right now we are just below it, but you could be putting in a little bit of consolidation that could be setting up for another move to the upside. So this is kind of one of those scenarios where as a trader, I sit back and I watch because I'm not good enough to kind of determine which direction it's going to go, but it mm -hmm. will be interesting. And I agree that if we get back above 23.8, and it can stay there, let's first say for 24 hours, it then increases the probability of us making a move up again and retesting the 25,000 level. Now, if we can't get above 23.8, it goes to the scenario that I just talked about prior, which right. is where you have to start looking at this 22,300 area on the chart. Now, let's take a look at Ethereum and the opportunities the charts are showing us right now. Yeah, so at least in the short term, we're kind of stuck in the same kind of parallel channel that we're seeing in the uh, the Bitcoin chart. And what I mean by that is if we kind of draw a trend line like this, we can bring this down here as well and notice that we're trending sideways to slightly up. Now, the one thing I think is a positive here in the near term, and this is just talking over the next few days to a week or so, is that we had this strong move up where we tested the high and now you are consolidating. So there is a chance that we could make another attempt, just like with Bitcoin, at the recent highs. If we do that and we can puncture it, you then have the possibility of going up and retesting that 2000 level. Now, interestingly enough, the 2000 level was the highest point on Ethereum since the, the lows were put in, right? And that's right. going back to basically August of 2022. Interestingly enough, Bitcoin has already tested that high uh, from that point. Now, granted, Ethereum made a much bigger percentage move, but it'd be interesting to see if Ethereum still needs to test that level before there's any chance of a corrective move mm. since Bitcoin already did do it. So it is something I'm watching. I would be based on the current chart in the very near term. I would be slightly bullish on um, on Ethereum here just over the next few days. And I think I think, again, with crypto, the, the key is this is right. The further away from FTX we get. And mm -hmm. the, the, the less there's new FTX scenarios, right, where you scare the market and you worry, people start worrying about, you know, their their money and their, their exchange accounts and so forth. I think the further away we get, the better it is for crypto, right? Now, the big headwind is going to be when are we going to get the judge's decision on Ripple? When are we going to get the regulation on crypto and find out exactly what it is? I mean, that's kind of the dark gray area here in the cryptocurrency markets. But I think investors are gaining you know, at least the retail crowd is gaining more and more stamina to be back in this market after they really got scared when FTX collapsed. As Bitcoin and Ethereum have been consolidating and trading sideways, the overall sentiment in the market has shifted from last month's greed to neutrality. Now, when we look at the Wall Street sheet sheet, which illustrates how sentiment shifts throughout a market cycle, we can clearly see the euphoria phase we experienced in 2021, followed by the massive crash in 2022. So, where does Gareth think we are in the cycle? Are we in the anger and depression stage, or are we closer to the disbelief phase that precedes a new bull market? I think right right around that bounce, the bounce with anger is kind of where I'm leaning towards where we are, that kind of orangish, yellow, orange, yeah. yep, exactly right there. So I still think it's going to fade. And, I, you know, I'm still in the camp that, you know, as of now, I haven't seen enough signals to make a call that the lows are in. But again, mm -hmm. you know, when you're trading at 16, 15,000, I don't think there's that much more to go to the downside. I mean, maybe 12 to 13, maybe worst case scenario nine. But for sure, we're in that anger area, right? I mean, I think FTX really was one of those scenarios where investors were like, what the heck? You know, this is messed up that people are, you know, basically lying to our face and just taking money and, and running. So so I do think that we're close. Um, I still think it could take another six to 12 months for it to bottom out. But but I think that, again, the downside is somewhat limited when you look at the bigger move from 69,000 all the way down to 15,7 or so. This is my caveat to that is that I, I do worry we're going to get in a recession that's not going to be a normal recession, right? We've just mm -hmm. gone through 13 years, arguably, of, of an expansionary period with massive printing of money, interest rates essentially near 0%. And so it, to me, there's almost this scenario where we could now be stuck in a longer recessionary period than what we're normally used to. And again, part of that is the fact that if inflation doesn't come down to two or sub two percent, the Fed is not going to be able to lower interest rates back down to where they were for the last big boom in 2021. And so, again, the question is, even if they drop, let's say they drop interest rates from five percent back to three and a half percent, how does this economy 
continue to function. And I do worry that we get in this scenario where we're stuck for a multi-year recessionary period. Mm -hmm. And I've actually gone on record in saying that I, I wouldn't be surprised if the S&P doesn't make new highs for five to 10 years at least, maybe even more. Recent sentiment data is pointing to a demographic shift, with people under 40 appearing to be moving away from traditional assets. Is it possible that, despite the turbulent waters we are navigating, we can see a new investment class emerge in the digital asset market and create stability in these markets over the next year? Let's listen to Gareth's thoughts on this. I do think so. I think that, again, the social media in the world has really bought, brought to the forefront. And that's why you see this under 40 crowd, right? Once you get to the 50s yep. and the 60 year olds, it's not quite as influenced by social media. But there's so mm -hmm. much on social media about the demise of fiat currencies, which which rightly so. I mean, when you see what the governments are doing around the globe, but it is really pushing younger investors to say, listen, I don't know about stocks. Is it a rigged game? Where is it not rigged? Well, the right now, the feeling is that it's more these crypto cryptocurrencies and the investing class of this new generation right. is absolutely looking at this as a new new place to put money as the older generations maybe don't invest as much because they have to use that money carefully for retirement sure. the younger generations now are splitting their money in between crypto assets and the stock market which means there's less money to go to the stock market so it even lends even more credence to that idea that it could be a long time before the s p 500 really makes a new all-time high Gareth predicts that stocks won't reach another all-time high anytime soon. Could this be the time when risk assets like crypto finally detach from the stock market and become the asset class we believe they will be at some point, existing in their own world? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.